What's up guys, it's GK for my web dummy and today we're going to take a look at a starter kit by Kangatech and it's called the Sub Ward. So if you've been vaping for a while now, then you probably have your backup kit, your backup mod for, you know, emergencies when you nothing else works, you still need something to vape on. So the Kanga Sub Ward, is it something that you should consider as your emergency vape? We will find out right after this in the close-ups. I will show you uh, the Kanga Sub Ward itself, the coils that it comes with some alternate coils that you can use if you don't want to use the one that it comes with and also an RBA section for the sub ward that you can use if you want to use this device but start building your own coils. So let's get to the close-ups right away. Alright guys, so here you have your packaging for the Kangatech sub ward kit black and red as per uh, almost all of Kangatech packaging you can see the sub ward here and at the back you have your code to check for authenticity and you have some instructions here on what the kit includes some caution and interesting enough okay make sure that you have the right version of the sub ward there are two two versions 3.2 ml for the us version and for the Europe version, it's 1.9 ml of e-juice capacity. So uh, make sure that if you're going to buy this, make sure that you're buying the correct one. So let's open the box. And let's take a look at the sub ward. So this comes in a few colors. Okay. And uh, to be honest, the one that I really wanted was the black version, but that was out of stock. And this looks pretty amazing as well completely stainless steel the battery and the tank as well and let's take a look at the package itself it comes with an extra pyrex glass tank a usb cable caution and some instructions on what to do for newbie vapors okay but this is a very generic uh, kangatech instruction booklet it doesn't really ap apply at all to the sub ward because you cannot adjust your wattage or voltage with the sub board. So you, for the sub board, you can pretty much ignore this. And you have your instruction booklet. The instructions here are okay. Okay. Um, of course, the English is not perfect, but it's good. So the diameter of the top tank nano is 18.5 mm. Lots of other instructions here, just in case you want to look at it. Okay. I don't think you can see much, but anyway, the instructions are good. But if I'm going to read you the instructions, then there's just no point in you watching this review. Okay, what else do we have here? Some more stuff to check for authenticity. And now let's get to the actual sub board itself. All right, so if you've never used a device like this before, okay, this is the battery part. And this is the tank or the clearomizer. So the tank here that we have here is the sub tank nano new uh, updated version of the sub tank nano that comes with top fill. Okay, so to take it apart, just unscrew it and you have your battery here and you have your USB charging port at the bottom so that's very easy for you to charge uh, with any kind of standard usb wire cable that you can use or you can use the one that comes included in the kit itself so really what we need to take a look at here is the sub tank nano standard uh, drip tip connection 510 drip tip so you can use any of your favorite drip tips and it is a top fill tank so to start filling this tank all you have to do is screw unscrew the top part here and fill in your e-juice on either side. Do not fill it in the middle, okay? Because if you fill it in the middle, it will go right to the coils and it will leak out of the airflow channels or airflow holes at the bottom. So at the bottom here, you have the airflow control, okay? And this has no stops to it. You can just keep twisting it and it will keep uh, twisting and, and that will open or close the airflow control on either side of it so you have one hole here and one hole on the other side 
and this is wide open all the way open and you can adjust it either way that you want to so now let's take this tank apart you have to be a bit careful with this uh, clear miser it's kind of small and you don't want to apply too much of force you may actually crack the glass tank uh, in my case i had some problem opening it up at first uh, probably because it has been screwed on a bit too tightly or it's been in the box for a while but after my first uh, rinse it was pretty much okay pretty easy to open up okay so let's take it apart and here is your coil all right so this is the bottom part of it here is your coil and it comes with a 0.5 ohm coil i've used this of course and that's why <laughs> You can see all the gunk here and this is called the SS OCC one of the newer coils by Kangatech all right so that's pretty much all the components of your sub tank nano itself nothing much to say about the battery it's one solid piece okay and to uh, get the battery on or off you just have to click it five times and you see the LED light blinking once it stops blinking it means that the battery is now turned on to turn it off five times again starts to blink and now it is off if the battery has very little power or charge in it then the led will also start to blink now this battery can uh, fire any kind of uh, atomizer that you put in here up to 0.4 ohms only and if you try to fire something below that like a 0.3 ohm coil it will also blink okay there's no screen on this so you just have to pay attention to the blinking led now let's talk about the coils itself so this is a 0.5 ohm coil and the battery is a fixed voltage battery it's fixed at 3.7 volts so if you are new uh, to vaping uh, then you don't have to worry about stuff like this. It's so simple. Just press the button and you can start vaping. But if you have used other devices before in wattage mode and now you start thinking about volts and you've never really thought about volts before and you, and you think like 3.7 volts, what does that mean? Well, the easiest way to know for sure is to use an Ohm's Law calculator. And you can find that at ohmslawcalculator.com. So for a 0.5 ohm coil with a 3.7 volts fixed voltage battery, according to the Ohm's Law calculator, you will be outputting 27.38 watts of power. Okay, so always go to the Ohm's Law calculator and check if you are using some other coils. Which brings me to an interesting part here. So although it comes with a 0.5 ohm SOCC, the newer calls by Kangatech, uh, but it's compatible with the older calls from Kangatech that look pretty much like this. Square design, and this is called just simply the OCC. So calls like this come in 0.5, okay, 0.5 ohm, also in this case 1.2 ohm, and it also comes in 1.8 ohm, etc. And calls like this, the older version, the OCC calls, these are much, much easier to find. Okay, I have trouble finding the new SOC, SSOCC calls as well, but these calls are very compatible. And as you can see here, you can screw the rest of it in perfectly with the older calls. It would mean that you have less space in your tank for your e-juice and as you can see here it fits in nicely screws in perfectly into the rest of the tank but of course that would mean that there's less space for your e-juice here okay so it won't be 3.2 ml anymore uh, but the coils the older coils are so much easier to find now there are also newer coils like the uh, SSOCC Clapton coil the one that you can see here with the black o-ring okay and this is for clapton coil i actually got this through another starter kit by kangatech for the top box mini and i've used this as well so the calls um all ssocc calls the new calls would fit into your sub tank nano tank for the sub ward kit but being a clapton call this requires so much more power and 
your battery is fixed at 3.7 volts okay so again you can go to ohmslawcalculator.com and find out in terms of watt or wattage how much of wattage you would actually uh, need to output for a Clapton coil and this Clapton coil is a 0.5 ohm as well okay so the device the battery would fire down up to 0.4 ohm so the Clapton coils work well the SSOCC 0.5 ohm coils work well as well and the older coils the ones that I'm using here uh, 0.5 ohm 1.2 ohm perfect no problem at all and that gives you a lot of options for finding coils for your sub tank nano kit or your sub watt kit now another interesting option with the sub ward and the sub tank nano is that there's actually an rba rebuildable atomizer that you can still find it's definitely an older design and if you have a sub tank mini then this is not the same rebuildable atomizer or rba that comes with your sub tank mini it is just slightly smaller and you can see it fits in here perfectly okay it's so it's slightly smaller this is an rba specifically for the sub tank nano and it's called the nano rba and so you can still get this from kanga tech or any other uh, online web stores and it fits in just like that nice so you can build whatever coil you want okay the coil that i have in here is a 0.70 ohm and for me uh, 0.7 ohm is actually better than 0.5 ohm uh, because as I told you before for a fixed 3.7 volts uh, of uh, voltage that comes with uh, the battery okay you would get 27.38 watts of power for me that is a bit too much so if I'm going to use the included 0.5 ohm coils uh, I don't usually whip at a 0.5 ohm at 27 watts okay i whip at 20 to 22 so 27 is still okay for some type of e-juice but for 50 50 pg vg e-juice sometimes it be a bit too much of power so if i am going to take long long hits with the sub -watt, then it does not taste so good anymore but with a 0.7 ohm i can actually get uh, 19.5 watts of uh, power output through the battery to my coils and for me that is a better range for my uh, preferred vaping experience so to unscrew it it's a bit tight here just like that it's a very very tiny deck and of course uh, it's for very tiny clearomizer or very tiny tank uh, but still you can get in a lot of different builds here to get to the resistance that you want using the nano rba and it has very small wicking holes at the bottom that you can see here all right so again with high or thick vg e-juice i'm not sure it may not work as well but for what i'm using it works just fine all right, so those are your options for the calls. You never have to worry with the sub -watt. You never run out of calls. It's backwards compatible with the older OCC calls. You can also use the Clapton call, the newer Clapton calls. Uh, but one thing I have to mention, if I didn't mention before, was that by using the Clapton call, the device and the tank gets really, really hot after a while. I mean, like really hot and so that's why i stopped using it but otherwise it was a good experience with the clapton calls and now i am going to fix all of these things back okay and i am going to show you how to fill in this tank but before that let me get my e-juice and uh, this coil has already been used uh, but if this is the first time that you are using this coil, i will show you how to prime the call because that is very very important okay in fact as soon as you get this device um, i want you to separate the tank from the battery instead of trying to turn on the battery okay because once you hit the battery you can already hear the coil starting to work and that would burn your cotton sometimes so take the tank out take the coil out prime it a little bit first before you decide to test the battery okay so here i have my e-juice okay fucking flavor freezy mango and to prime your coil okay you just have to drop some e-juice over here and over here or you can drop some into the middle here but don't do both okay because then you'll have some 
air trapped in between uh, both the layers of the e-juice. Um, so you can see when the, the coil is actually fully saturated, it will no longer absorb any e-juice just like this, okay? As long as the coil can still absorb the e-juice that you are dripping here, then continue to put a little bit more e-juice and wait for a while and let that e-juice be absorbed and put a little bit more until it's completely saturated. It will just refuse to accept any more e-juice that you put in just like this. Then screw in the rest of the sub tank nano and open the top fill you can also fill this from the bottom so i'm going to show you how to fill it from the bottom very straightforward actually it's a lot of space here all right that's how you fill it from the bottom but it can only go up to like three quarters of the tank and if you want to get it completely full, you have to screw in the rest of the tank. Open the top fill part. And now you can actually fill it up all the way to the top. Okay. Just like that. Screw it back in. Very easy top fill uh, method for the tank. And in most cases, I've seen no leaking come out of the coils here. Uh, the only time it's actually leaked is when I accidentally uh, put in the aegis through the chimney section or the shaft section, which you should not do. Now let's put the device back or put the tank back on the battery. If I click on and off, or let me see if it's already on. Yep, it's already on and you can actually hear uh, the coil firing up. All right, so what you want to do is... Um, you may want to test if there's uh, any e-juice still left in your coil uh, area by just uh, sucking on the drip tip and if you can uh, hear gurgling sounds then you can just blow out okay any excess e-juice out of here and just wipe it out it's okay because when you prime the coil it tends to get messy a bit and then now you are ready to take a weep Okay, so that is the Kanga subword for you. A very, very simple device. The battery, uh, when it's fully charged, for me, it can last eight hours, you know, a full working day. If you whip on it a lot, it may last a little less than that. And as for the resistance, okay, with a 0.5 ohm resistance coil that comes with it, the one that's inside here, the battery definitely doesn't last as long as when I'm using my, uh, the RBA section with a 0.7 ohm that lasts much, much longer. So the lower resistance coil that you're using here, the battery life would suffer. All right, guys, we're back. So I uh, forgot to mention that uh, now in this video, I have changed my background color. How nice is that? So no more white background. You have, I have a very nice dark background so you can see the vapor. So let's vape on uh, the subword. So I have a 50-50 uh, e-juice in here. So definitely if you are vaping on a higher PG uh, e-juice, you're going to get more clouds than that. But I think, you know, the clouds are huge enough for the kind of device that this is. Very simple, very sleek device. Very easy to carry around. Uh, connects with any standard USB charger so you can charge it almost everywhere that you have access to a USB charger even in your car and to be honest with you I actually wanted to get the black version but it was not in stock anymore and I just couldn't wait to buy it from any online stores so I got the stainless steel version uh, but that being said there are many stickers or wraps that you can get to actually change this to whatever design, whatever color that you want. So let me show you my previous uh, emergency vape, okay? This is the uh, Kanga e -Ward, much older battery, and I've, I've changed the tank from the e -Ward to the Aero Tank Mini, also by Kanga, okay? And you can see the size difference in this. This is the Aero Tank Mini and e -Ward, and this is the new sub ward by Kangatech. Obviously a much, much bigger device, but still pretty much portable. If you ask me, it's still very easy to carry this around. Now in terms of uh, 
the VAPE the experience. This is definitely the older one, the uh, sub, the EVOD and the Aerotank Mini, definitely for mouth to lung type of inhale, okay? Not bad. The clouds that I get from uh, the Aerotank Mini just was good enough for me. But, you know, technology, you always have something bigger, better. Uh, they can make even bigger clouds than before. So, I tell you what, I'm, I was pretty happy with uh, my previous setup. And I guess I'll still be using it from uh, every now and then. But the problem with the older setup that I had, the EWOD, was that it's an Ego style battery. Okay, so... This is how the battery looks like and the problem is i need a very specific kind of charger the charger looks like this okay so i got to plug it in like this screw it in okay and then i can charge so if i do not bring this charger around with me then it kind of defeats the whole purpose of having an uh, emergency vape because once the uh, battery is dead, there's just no way to charge it anymore. The subword on the other hand, okay, as I showed you in the close-up, standard USB charger, so uh, definitely bigger clouds in it, uh, has an RBA section that, as I showed you in the close-up, does not come with a kit. It will cost you a little bit extra to get it, if you can find it actually, because it's a, it's a older uh, RBA model that was meant for an older version of the sub tank nano uh, which is basically the tank here okay but if you can still find it then it just gives you a whole lot more options let's talk about the problems that or the issues that you can have uh, with a device like this so it's a very simple device just one button and um, if this is your first time with any kind of a uh, vape device if, if it's your first time vaping okay then definitely a device like this will be much much easier for you to use and to understand than a regular mod with up and down buttons and a, a menu and you know a variable a wattage to to figure out what watts you should vape it at this is just like so much easier but if you have been vaping for a while now with your own mod then you may find that you need to adjust how you vape uh, on the subboard or any kind of device like this that fires at a constant volt, 3.7 volts in the case of the uh, subboard, uh, you would need to adjust your vaping style. Let me give you an example. If you like to vape with long hits, something like this. Then you're going to have some problem. You may get some dry hits. Uh, towards the end of that hit okay because i think for a device like this it was meant for medium hits okay or shorter ones like this or like this now let me try a really long like five second hit Definitely a much bigger cloud with a longer uh, hit. But towards the end of it, I do get the feeling that I'm going to get some uh, dry hits. And uh, I think there's not much you can do about that. If you have your own preferred way of vaping, then uh, with a device like this, you can get the RBA section. And then you can do your own call. So you can get to the ohms or the resistance that you want with your own build to match the battery on it i mean but uh, the good news is the sub tank nano the updated sub tank nano with top fill it is a great tank okay sub tank nano is a great tank so you can always take the tank out and put it on your own uh, on your other devices with a variable voltage or variable wattage to you know adjust the way you weigh but i would say that uh, if you are still trying to figure out uh, a device for your travel vaping or your emergency vaping then you definitely want to consider getting the kanga subboard now i know there are many similar devices like this on the market today by inokin inokin endura etc but 
Uh, the thing with the subword is that Kanga Tech has uh, made sure that it's backwards compatible with the older OCC calls as i showed you in the close-ups and those calls those calls are everywhere man they're, they're very very popular so you should be able to find those calls like anywhere you go okay any country any place where sub tanks um, sub tank minis and uh, sub tank nanos are popular you'll find lots of those calls so it'll be easy for you to find replacement calls other than that i think well kanga tag is well known for making really good quality uh, tanks and and this is really good quality as well i've had no leaking issues with it okay i fill it up from the top many times no leaking issues whatsoever even when i put the mod on its side like this for a while okay no leaking issues but of course as i showed you in the close-ups you can close the airflow completely if you're worried that it may leak uh, before you store it in your bag in your uh, luggage whatever and if you want to bring it around with you in the airport if you have to check it in your checked luggage make sure of course you take the battery out okay it has a locking mechanism but you know just to be safe you can just disassemble the battery and store it separately Okay, so that's all for my review of the Kanga Subward. I am right now trying to get a different skin for it. So if I can find the skin that I want, then I will go ahead and order it. And uh, I will uh, create a different video where I show you how to apply the skin. So go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'm so happy that I got this background now. Because now when I talk about the clouds that uh, this device makes, you can actually see it. Alright folks, thank you very much for watching. My name is GK and do subscribe to the Web Dummy channel on YouTube.